the first Sunday in December. Do you not know that in, in four more Sundays, or three more Sundays, or four more Sundays, we'll be in a new year. And God has been gracious to us. God has been truly good to us. And we ought to bless his name. We ought not to wait until a special occasion in the midst of the service. But if you know that God has been good to you and your household, you ought to lift your voice right now. You ought to tell God, thank you. You ought to talk about how that good if he was that if he was that like a recital. But I'm talking about, we're talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Will somebody open up your mouth and just thank God? Hallelujah.
where I want to go right now. I just want to, I just want to bask in the presence of God. I just want to do His will. I just thank God. I, I don't want y'all to try to push me too fast. I know you came to church to hurry up and get out, but I just, I just need, I just need somebody that will just praise God with me. I just need somebody that will just believe God that anything good in my praise. That, that the answer, that the answer will come. The answers that you've been praying for, the things that you've been believing for, that the answer will come in the midst of your praise. I know some of you say, I know some of you say, but I'm not that loud. You don't have to be loud to praise God. A hallelujah from a quiet spirit. Y'all, I do remember when, when, when the prophet was running into the mountain and there was an earthquake that came in and, and all kinds of noise that came, but he wasn't in, he, he wasn't in none of that. The rock split open. He wasn't even in that. But then the, the, the prophet heard a small, still voice. And it was something that was, it had such power with it that he had to cover his face for the glory that showed up. Do you not know that God is the same God? That we learned how to give God what he asked for? And if he 
said, I'm going to bless you, you're going to be blessed. Amen. And so I want to talk to you from the thought, he meant it for my good. Amen. Whatever it is, he meant it. And see, see, you got to put yourself personally there. That's why I said he meant it for my, my good. That very mind means possess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, he's working it for my good because, because he's a good God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And because he's good, he cannot be tried with evil. All right. And neither does he tempt any man to do evil. Amen. The Bible said we, we, we do this because we're drawn away of our lust oh, yeah. and enticed. With, and and what, what I want you to understand is when we're drawn away of our lust and entice, it has nothing to do with God. It has all to do with the enemy trying to pull us away right. from the goodness of God. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, we have an adversary. And this adversary does not want you to receive the goodness of God. And so what he will do is he will play havoc with your heart and with your mind and make you believe that you don't deserve it. And can I tell you, to be honest, none of us deserve anything. But we thank God because of his grace. His unmerited favor toward us. Do you not know that that there are other people that want some of the things that you have and you're thinking that you're going through some stuff. But I want to tell you that even when you're going through, you're still being graced. You're getting things that you don't deserve. You do know that death for all of us is supposed to be what we're having. But God did not give us what we deserve. Can I, get, can I get at least three people that will praise God that I don't get what I deserve? Well, the Bible teaches us that the wages of sin is death. But because he did it for my good, he tells me that, that the gift of God is eternal life. Can I tell y'all uh, something about a gift? You don't work for a gift. There's so many people that are sitting in church trying to be good, trying to look good, trying to act good. And I want to tell you, out of all the good that you can do, it's still as filthy rag in the sight of God. It is not about our righteousness and how, how many times we've been to church and how many times we've read the Bible and, and all that kind of stuff that we want to throw up that we that we doing. That has nothing to do with righteousness. The only way that we can ever righteous is that we have to have a trade-off. Right. We have, we, we take the Lord our sins and we give him all of our issues. We give him all of those things that we've been dealing with, all those things that the, those habits and all that stuff that we've been trying to deal with ourselves and trying to juggle like we like we in a circus somewhere trying to juggle all this stuff and we bring it and we give it to God. And he in turn gives us a gift of peace. Anybody here that God ever just gave you peace, you were worried about everything and all of a sudden you turn and you begin to say, God, I can't handle this. And he gave you peace of mind in the midst of the thing that ought to drove you crazy. So I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is, is that the devil meant it for bad, but God, he meant it for good. There's even testimonies, even on both sides of, of being at the point of death. Drunk 
across the street. Could have been an eye address. Young man came over yesterday and said, you do know my pop, my pop passed away the other day. I ain't talking about, I ain't talking about down the street. I'm talking about if I walk across the street, it's a house across the street, my neighbor that I can look at his face. He left this world. And well enough for me to make me think that it could have been my address. So I, I, I'm not going to come in here and act like and try to poison stuff because I got something to praise him for. I got something to rejoice about. Not because of my name is but because God came by my house. He could have come to my house and said, but he did. He meant it for good. Then this morning we're looking on Facebook and they they tell me that one of my classmates, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the same age, yeah. left this world. Went to the same school. The same age. Could have been me instead of her. But it wasn't me, it was her. Let me say that again. 
is to win division. Discord. Let me say that. Discord in the family will cause the whole house to break down. Discord in the church family will cause there to be a rift in the house. But in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every, dis every discord, every disgruntled spirit.
up in here. I know y'all have got lost, but I'm still right where I need to be because the devil been a command of God is working it.
this is it. This is me. I'm struggling with this. I'm going through this. I, 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 I don't understand.
Then it will be served immediately after service. That's between 12 and 2 p.m. Please come and join us as we lift up the name of Jesus and honor his great name of faith and wisdom. Thank you. Amen.
December, we will have a church uh, family meeting where we will take care of all the things that need to be taken care of that we might end 2022 so that we go into 2023 with a clean slate and a, a new focus on what we're going to want to accomplish for 2023 with God's help. So we will uh, give that date as soon as we can get our get all the information together and so that we can move forward uh, with our church family meeting. Is there any other thing? Yes, ma'am. That's going to remind everybody that service next Sunday is at 9 a.m.? Oh, that's not next Sunday. That's the third Sunday. Okay. No, it's next Sunday, second Sunday. Okay. But I will remind you. On the third Sunday, thank you for uh, reminding me. On the third Sunday, third Sunday, which is uh, the 18th, I believe it is. On the 18th, we will have morning service at 9 o'clock instead of 10. Uh, we have been asked... Uh, by the church family that came for homecoming for us to come back to them for their family and friends day but they're only having morning service at 11 o'clock and so they're asking us uh, to come to them at 11 so in order for us to get there by 11 o'clock if we start our service at 9 it's about a 45 minute drive up 17 and you know how the traffic is doing any time and so we want to try to you know be there at, at a right time. And so we're going to have morning service at 9 on the third Sunday. And then we will travel up, those of you who are able and willing to go with us, travel up to Hampstead. They are serving lunch right after morning service and that we can be a part of the Family and Friends Day there. Uh, Sunday school, Sunday school that, that uh, we usually have on Sunday morning, on the third Sunday morning will be that Wednesday. Uh, we will have, I believe it's uh, December 12th, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, then we will do our Sunday school during that time, and our teacher will teach, and we will be on the phone line during that time for Sunday school. Amen? Amen. Uh, so 9 o'clock on the third Sunday, we will uh, convene for morning service. So we look forward to seeing you uh, next Sunday and any other Sunday that the Lord put it on your heart to meet with us. If that's all that claims our attention. If you would stand, we're going to close our morning service and then we will go into our communion. For those of you who are able to stay, uh, we do have the communion elements. Our ushers will be more than happy to serve you if you haven't, haven't received communion uh, element. Father, we are so grateful thank you. for all things. Thank you. And we thank you that, Lord God, that we serve a great God who loves us unconditionally. And your favor is upon your children. And so, Father, we claim to be your favorite child. That, Lord God, that you did, you gave one son. That you can have a whole plethora of sons and daughters. Help us to live our lives, Lord God, that we please you. And if we find ourselves outside of your will, God, Help us to quickly return back that we might be able to bring honor and glory to your name. Yes. Don't let us hold grudges. Don't let us walk with unforgiveness in our heart. But let love abide. And the scripture teaches us as we close that greater love have no man than this, that he will lay down his life for free. And you call us free. Bless every home, Lord God. Bless every person. That, Lord, there be no lack in their lives. That the joy of the Lord will be their strength. And the peace of God that has all understanding will keep their hearts in mind in and through Christ Jesus our Lord. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, Rest the Bible with us now and forever. Let us sing with the choir.
forward and pray that those of you again that are able to stay for communion with you, we thank you for being here and staying with us. For those of you that might have to leave at this time, we pray God that he will bless you and keep you in his care. Not by force of habit, but in the spirit of obedience do we come together on the first Sunday of every month to be reminded in communion and walking in obedience to the spirit of God and the word of God. The Bible said that Jesus with his disciples come to an upper room in a spirit of celebration because they were celebrating the Passover. Yeah. Passover is reminded of when the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt. The last plague was the death angel taking the firstborn of those that didn't have the blood over the doorpost. As we prepare ourselves and we come in community together. We do this in remembrance of our Lord and our Savior. And he said, when you come into the place where I am, we're going to do this new in paradise because I'm not going to be able to do this with you again until we do it new in paradise. But he said, as often as you do this, you show forth my death and my suffering until I come again. Let me set the mood in the room. They are celebrating. They are having a good time. Food is flowing. And laughter and celebrating. And all of a sudden, the mood changes in the room. Jesus began to tell them, I'm leaving. I didn't come here to stay. And he began to institute. He began to tell them, he said, now, there's one of you that's sitting here with me that's going to leave out this room and you're going to go and you're going to sell me out. The rest of you are going to deny the dream of you. And the rest of you are going to hide. Peter said, if everybody else leave you, Lord, I ain't going nowhere. Be careful of what you say because what you say you're going to be challenged on. So the Bible said that when they are sitting in this room, Jesus takes bread. He blesses the bread. And he declares to them, he said, this is my body that will be broken for you. Will you open and will you take the bread with me? Representing the body of our Lord and our Savior. I know that everybody do it different. Let me do it the way God has put it in my heart to do today. Amen. Representing the body of our Lord and Savior. Y'all do know that they beat him. Y'all do know that they've done all kinds of things to his physical body to break him. But it could be broken. So as we take this bread, we do this in remembrance of our Lord and Savior. The body of our Lord and Savior. Let us eat together. Then he declared the cup of the Lord represented his blood that will be shed for the remission of our sins. By the blood of our Lord, let us drink together. The Bible said that when they finished eating and drinking, they left from where they were and went to the Mount of Olives where Jesus went into prayer. We're going to be tested, brothers and sisters, but do know that if God be for us, there is nothing or nobody that can stand against us. Let us leave this house today with a new, with a new zeal to please God and a new dedication in our lives that we want to bring glory and honor to God. We love you. We thank God for you. 
we want you to go in the power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And for those of you who are able to stay for our premiere of the choir uh, menu and for the information that Sister Washington is going to share, we ask that you stay where you are. If you have to leave, we say God bless you until we meet again. God bless everyone. And thank you for, for being in the service today. Amen. Um, I guess we you ran away, so can I, it would be all right if I introduce you. This uh, is Sister Washington, right? Okay. Well, Brother William will introduce because he knows her a little bit better than I do. Um, for the past couple of years, the pastor has been talking about trying to get us into the more ministry, like more outreach ministry and stuff like that. Um, best thing is I have a good friend of mine named Janelle Washington who's been doing this for years. And this is actually one of her passions and stuff that she likes to do. So I asked her to come in to help us know a little bit more about what it is, how to start one or how to do certain things. And she is here to basically give a presentation of what she does. Janelle Washington. I am a member of Price Cathedral and Design Church. I'm located at 1201 Orange Street. Um, and I am the outreach director there. A lot of y'all know me as Trudy Evans' daughter. I am her oldest daughter, a member of the JT Exodus Singers. So if you know me by that too. Um, and so I've come today to just kind of give you a little insight on outreach and kind of show you what we started from. Um, I started with, oh, and my pastor is the Reverend Dr. Charlene Madison. And so how we started outreach was, I started years ago, um, and my first outreach was, we did a back to school bash um, for the community. And then we did that for a couple of years. And then what happened was it became saturated. Everybody was doing it. So then I said, we need to change up. And how can we be different and how can we be an impact? And so, the next slide. Um, COVID was an eye-opener because basically what happened was um, we, the church was closed. And so we said, how can we be an impact? Because now the people are looking for the church to be exactly who they said they're going to be. So that's why we were like, oh, we need to do something different. So just a general um, definition is F, um, outreach is an effort by individuals in the organization or group to connect its ideas or practices to the efforts of other organizations. Y'all see other is in big. Yeah. Other, and you'll see why when we get in this presentation. Groups, specific audiences, or the general public. So just a quick synopsis, what are some things that maybe, when you think of outreach, or you, it comes to your mind, just scream it out, what do you think when you think outreach? Going out into the community. Okay, going out into the community. Helping others, giving back, things of that nature. Yeah. You're getting that. So that's exactly what we had to do. This picture right here is the reason how this picture um, is how we revamp our outreach. Um, this is my little nephew, Makai. And if you see him, he has like a little cart. He came to me and he said, Auntie, the church is closed. Now what do we have to do to be wow. a blessing? That baby in that picture was six years old. He's 10 years old now. Wow. So he came to me and said, Auntie, we got to do something. Um, oh I was a former employee with New Hanover County School System. So I was there when we got the call that schools were shutting down. Yeah. And so what I did was I reached out to a neighborhood school that was serving food. And I said, how can we get food to the community that we need to get it to? Our babies cannot cross that street because New Hanover High School is across Market Street is busy. And they said, well, you can come here and pick up the food. We went there every day and picked up anywhere from 50 to 80 meals a day. And we were able to serve the kids so they would not have to go across the street. And so that is one big way that we revamp. So my biggest thing with that is everybody matters. 
There is no age. There is no discrepancy. There is no race. There's no religion. Everybody matters as far as in decision making process. Um, okay, so now we're going to get into partnership. That was my big reasons for saying others. We do not do it alone. A lot of outreach that we've done, we have partnered with people and organizations that has provided us the opportunity to be a staple within our community. One of the main things we wanted to do was, well, I sat down with my board, I have a board of four people. It is myself, my assistant director, it is my resource coordinator, my marketing coordinator, and then my um, street team. So we sat down as a community and as a board, and we said, we need to find out what the people want. So the first thing we did was survey the community. There is no need to bring resources if the community does not need it. That's a waste of time. It's a waste of time to bring something that nobody needs. So we hit the ground running. We went around to every door. And if y'all know where Price Cathedral is at, it's located in a, a impoverished area. It's a lot of children in the area. It's a lot of elderly people in the area. So like I said, there was no need for us to bring resources that did not make sense. So we went around foot to foot, which means we got out of our comfort zone. We got out of the church because the church was closed. So we went around with a survey general demographics and ask, what is it that you would like to see and what do you need to come to your community? So, you can hit the next one. So, this is a prime example when I said others. We have to tap into those resources that are available. If y'all see the picture on the right with me and a lot of the kids, um, we were having an event and um, somebody contacted me and was like, we have a mission group here full of youth, use them, they can help you do some things. So we were having a giveaway and I tapped into them, then they basically went out in the neighborhood and passed out the resources. The second picture on the right is, um, go back Will, there's one more, go back. So the picture on the right is you see some young men. The, the, the funny looking kid right there, that's my oldest child. But the other two are two of his friends that don't even go to the church, but we use them. So one of the biggest things is using your resources and using yeah. what you have. Yeah. Um, this actual box that they're picking up, we built the blessing box. We went to Kids Making It in Wilmington, North Carolina, and they provided everything and we built this huge blessing box. And so now people in the community are able to come by and get those resources. Now you can go to the next one. So our first big event and our first partnership was um, Catholic Charities. Um, I think you, somebody, some people came from, you came from, yep, yeah, some people came, but what it was was we tapped into Catholic Charities and they said, take a training and then you will become a disaster relief site. So now, if a disaster relief comes, a blizzard, a tornado, a hurricane, a flood, an ice storm, we are equipped and people in the community can come to the church and get resources that they need. We are on a state level. That literally took one day of training, four hours, and then now we are able to tap in and a disaster come. But that's, again, also tapping into those other resources. So that's one way. So at this event on the right where you see legal aid, we sponsored a kickoff to let the community know that we were a disaster relief site. We invited legal aid. We invited um, Nourish and see. So we invited other vendors. And so a prime example with that is, if you have the space, a lot of places are looking for just the space. You don't even have to do a lot of work. Um, we contact, because of what they're trying to do also is these other vendors are trying to get their information out there also. So they bring the people, they bring the resources, they just provide the space. If you see the picture on the left of me, um, the girl in the red coat, that was a tablet giveaway. Somebody contacted me and was like, we just need your church and your volunteers. We were able to give out 500 tablets to the community. Um, and we brought nothing but our volunteers and they just used our church. They did the registration, they did the paperwork and everything of that nature, but they know that we were in the process of doing outreach. You can skip to the next one. So this is a um, just a general overview of some things that we do 
So there's a difference. You have forever partnerships and then you have one-time partnerships. So forever partnerships like Catholic Charities, um, you see Emily up there on the, on the right hand side and you see the Catholic Charities van, that is a forever partnership because now we are state trained through them and we are connected on a state level with them. And so that is a forever partnership. Something like the tablets were a like one-time partnership. That doesn't mean that we can't call them again, but Catholic Charity provides the staple resources. We do something every month where we give back to the community. We also have a um, connection with Nourish and Seed. That's kind of like the blue buckets on the bottom. And we have produce through them. So through Nourish and Seed, we do a food pantry once a month. And so we that is a forever partnership because we are able to give snack pack to the kids and we are also able to give out food um, to the community and then to the left we had a vaccine um, we had a vaccine giveaway and so that was like a one-time partnership now one-time partnerships can turn into forever partnerships and provide different things but the forever partnerships are the staple and so, like I said, going back to what I said, when we surveyed the community and find out a lot of them were talking about, we need food, we need water, we need cleaning supplies, you know, we need different things. And so, like, Catholic Charities is how we tap into um, having those forever supplies. So then there is, real quick, there is um, forever partnerships, there's one-time partnerships, and there's projects. So with projects, we have a project, we um, had a back-to-school bash, we had some things left over. We took it to one of the schools, and they said, thank you so much. And I said, if there's anything else we can do, let us know. And they said, well, we honestly need things at the beginning of the new year. Because when August comes, they're tapped into so many campaigns that they get a lot of school supplies. And so we tapped in with them, and we said, OK, what do y'all need? They said, we need hygiene products. This school that I'm talking about serves minority African-American kids. Um, and these children come to school and will keep a hood on their head because their hair is not done. Or they will not go to PE and skip PE because they don't have clean socks. So something like that, now we've adopted them and they've become our school. So we do a New Year, New You project with them. It's a big kickoff event. Um, and we collect stuff all year and then we basically give them everything. Um, last year, each boy was, be able, was, be, was able to get a swag bag, and each girl was able to get a diva clutch. So in the swag bag was just things for boys, and then the diva clutch was things for girls. Um, and so that's kind of how it works far as with projects like that. Do not think that you can't do it. That's the biggest thing. Because like that's, that, that's the big reason that I said other, because we can't do anything on our own. We tap into other resources. These other resources have money. They're looking for churches, they're, especially churches. They're looking for churches to give out the resources. They're looking for churches to be a host. They're looking for churches to support them. Most of the time when we have an event, it is not even anything. We just provide the volunteers. But they have the supplies. They have money. They're trying to give back. They just want to know a congregation that is um, willing to help and willing to want to get out. Tap into other churches. My main thing is whenever we do an event, I let Will know, and like uh, Reverend Bill Tech, he's come for, tap into other churches. If you feel like you don't have enough youth, if you feel like you don't have enough young adults, if you feel like you don't have enough, tap into other churches. Because at the end of the day, when we get up there, it don't matter what church you went to, if God sees you giving back, he want to know that you was giving out of your heart. He's not going to, you know, say, well, you went to this church and you gave this and you gave that. So tap into um, other churches. We use other churches all the time, all the time. There's another church that we team with um, because they didn't have a lot of youth. And so, like, we have a lot of youth. And so our boys went over there to help them because we were doing, like, a produce box giveaway. Um, and they went to help them. So um, if that's a concern... Don't be fearful. Don't be fearful. Are there any questions? Thank you. Amen. So I told Will what I would do is, and uh, um, after y'all kind of sit down and decide to talk about it, I'll come back in about two weeks or so, or I'll get up with him, and then, um, you know, y'all can decide your board or decide exactly how you want to move forward, and then we can go from there. 
I already have some resources that we are connected with that are ready to work with y'all. When uh, Will talked to me about this, I already reached out to them. So they are ready um, to hit the ground running and, and help you guys and, and get where you need to be and get where you want to be. So I already have some resources that are ready to go. Yes, ma'am. Um, if we have questions before you come back, mm -hmm. can you contact me? Yes, yes, yes. Y'all can contact me if you want to write down my number. Um, it's 910-632-4074. And then my email is my name is Janelle Washington. So it's J-A-N-E-L um, Washington. All together, the number 84 at gmail.com. So if there's any questions, please contact me if there's anything you want to know any more specifics and then um, like i said i'll come back and then once you get your board and figure out what you want to do then we can go from there all right and just one more quick thing i am now an employee of smart start in Hanover county we have an arpa grant and so if you have any children in the home ages 0 to 17 the only thing is you cannot have an open dss case but i have the applications in my car we had a grant come from arpa and what this grant will do is this grant will um, give you a stipend for $250. Take advantage of it. If we do not get, if we don't get rid of the money, the federal government takes the money back. So we are trying to get rid of the money. My supervisor and my two people under me, we had a meeting and she gave me like a stack of application. There is no income bracket. You do not have to bring anything to us to show us your income. We don't need to know all that. Just no open DSS case. Um, and then I have a list of things that we can help you with. It can go from a grocery gift card to a gas gift card to utility bills, anything of that nature. So I'll be here for a little bit. So if y'all want to tap into me, that's great. Let's go. Again, as I said before, we don't have to reinvent the wheel when the wheel is already rolling. All we have to do is just get on board. And I just 